Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a very long time since I've sat down and filmed a video, but I really felt like this one was necessary, not only for my own personal benefit, but maybe for somebody else who could possibly be going through the same thing. First off, I wanna start with, we now live in Hawaii. So we moved here almost two months ago and also that I was recently pregnant with my second pregnancy. So I just want to start this story off with um, my pregnancy history so that might help and, and share a little bit of the background on my personal history with pregnancy. In September of 2017, I had a miscarriage at eight weeks. And then about 10 months later, on July 4th, 2019, I found out I was pregnant again. And on November 28th, 2019, I gave birth to my son, but he was stillborn at 25 weeks and three days. So, um, I gave birth to him only two weeks ago. It's still very, very fresh, but I feel like talking about it could help. And if this could help anybody else, then that would make me extremely happy and make me feel like this has given me a purpose. So, um, I'm not going to cry in this video. This is my second time filming this. I want to be able to share his story because he's very important to me and put out some awareness out there for infant loss and things like that. It's so much more common than people think and I really never thought that this would happen to me. I'm young, I'm only 22 years old, I'm healthy, I've always been healthy, I've never had health problems or anything like that. Things like this, they they don't discriminate. They go after people who are healthy, who are young. So I think sharing this could be extremely beneficial to people. So I'm just going to start at the beginning. I started to have extremely bad migraines the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving went on Thursday. I thought that these headaches were just due to pregnancy very common for pregnant women to get headaches your hormones are crazy things like that I haven't had any indication whatsoever that a headache would be a bad thing the headache lasted for five days and as the five days progressed the headache and slowly got more and more intense I felt I, I believe the wording that he used to tell my husband was Nick I seriously feel like my brain is going to explode and come out of my ears. I kept saying that over and over and I was just sobbing in bed, couldn't sleep. I seriously felt like I was going insane. And the only safe medication that my doctor told me that I could take was Tylenol. So I was taking the max dose of Tylenol that I was allowed to take and it seriously did not touch my headache. It did not help at all. I was like, this is useless. What's the point of me even loading myself up with Tylenol if it's not even gonna help with the headache kind of thing. So, if you hear a helicopter, I'm sorry. Military life, there's always helicopters flying over my house. Equated these headaches to be from pregnancy hormones, things like that. My entire pregnancy thus far was completely healthy. There was no indication that anything could have been. Baby was extremely active. He was always kicking and wiggling around and always had a very strong heartbeat, always in like 145 to 150 beats per minute. So I never had any indication that anything would be wrong at all. So after five days of this headache slowly getting more and more intense to the point that I felt like I was going absolutely insane, not getting good sleep, you know, it's, it's not good to not get good sleep because that can slowly make you feel sick and things like that. So I ended up calling the advice nurse line that is offered through my insurance. And I spoke to an RN and she asked me a bunch of questions. How far along was I? Um, was I dizzy? Was I nauseous? Like what kind of headache? Where on my head? Things like that. After I told her all of that, 
she advised that I just better be safe than sorry, just go into the ER, be checked out, they can give me some pregnancy safe pain medication that's stronger and get this headache knocked out so I can finally have some relief because obviously the Tylenol rest and drinking tons of water was not helping at all. So after we got off the phone with the nurse advice line, I decided to take her advice and we started to get ready. My husband got our son ready, which I don't know if I've ever mentioned on my channel before, but I have a almost four year old stepson and he lives with us. So he went and got him ready and himself ready and went downstairs to get shoes on, things like that, get the car loaded up, let the dog out, you know, all that good stuff because this was about 7.30 in the morning, so we haven't even gotten out of bed yet. As soon as I sat up out of bed, I got so nauseous, even more nauseous than I felt in my first trimester. And I haven't been nauseous at all this entire pregnancy. So I told Nick, I was like, all right, well, you can go downstairs, I'll meet you there. I need to go to the bathroom to get sick. So I did that and let me tell you, it was absolutely horrible. I've never been so violently ill in my entire life. It was awful. Um, all I had on my stomach was Tylenol and water. So it was just horrible, just to say the least, to kind of keep it non-TMI, it was just horrible. So after that, I started to try and get myself dressed and I kept getting progressively more and more dizzy. I was just standing in the middle of my room and I felt like my body was just kind of on a boat swaying back and forth and the entire room started to spin. Nick came back upstairs to check on me because I haven't been downstairs yet and I was struggling to get myself dressed because I, I was so dizzy I felt like I couldn't see my clothes. I know that sounds extremely dramatic, but I was holding a sports bra and I couldn't even figure out how to put it on because I was so extremely dizzy. So Nick helped me put on my sports bra and I put on a pair of leggings and a sweatshirt. This is where things started to go downhill pretty quickly. I started to get so dizzy that my vision started to go into itself and get black around the edges and I... I've never experienced anything like that before. I've passed out before, but I've never had it to where my vision slowly faded away from the edges and got really black. It was, it was honestly terrifying. I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was probably the scariest thing to ever happen to me. And I called out to my husband. I asked, I told him, I said, babe, I think I'm gonna pass out. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I, I, it went completely black and thank the Lord my husband was there and standing right next to me because he was able to catch me and lay me down on the ground and put a pillow under my head and turn me on my side and that's when I began to have my first seizure which later I found out were called um, eclamptic seizures because I had eclampsia unknowingly had eclampsia I should say so after my first seizure was finished, Nick quickly ran downstairs, grabbed his... Sorry about that, my camera died, so I had to go grab a new battery. But after Nick laid me down and made sure that I was finished with my seizure so he could leave me alone, he was able to run, grab his phone, call 911, and then paramedics arrived to our house. Um, I have no memory of this whatsoever. I learned that after seizures you most of the time lose your memory and you don't remember anything because of the trauma that your brain goes through you kind of go through like a fog i guess i could say like a, your brain just gets foggy so you don't remember anything um it's been almost two weeks since this has happened and i still don't remember anything so everything i'm about to tell you is basically verbatim what happened on what my husband has told me. Paramedics came, they checked me out, checked my vitals, all that good stuff. And then they loaded me up in the ambulance. I live about 25 minutes away from the hospital. So Nick followed them in the car with our son and 
in the ambulance en route to the hospital, I had my second seizure. And then they got to the hospital and Nick said that they were flying to the hospital. So he felt like something was wrong. And I mean, at this time he didn't know that I have had another seizure. They unloaded me, got me into the emergency room and to have seizure number three. Nick said it was absolutely chaotic. There was about 15 people in the room hooking me up to IVs, trying to get the seizures to stop. And they successfully got the seizures to stop. They got me on a magnesium drip, which my seizures were due to eclampsia and my blood pressure was absolutely through the roof, which was causing the seizures. And I also had protein in my urine. So I never got diagnosed with preeclampsia. So the reason I was having these migraines and seizures and all of that was from the eclampsia. So basically it's um, a medical condition you get when you're pregnant and most of the time they catch it in time to get you started on medications and things like that. But unfortunately in my case, they did not catch the preeclampsia. They uh, did not catch the protein in my urine. They didn't catch my high blood pressure or anything until it was too late. But by the grace of God, I'm okay. So after they got my seizures under control, they rushed me up to CT to check on my brain because after so many seizures in a short amount of time back to back, and I believe Nick said the duration of the seizures were quite long. They were over a minute long, but he said to him it, it felt like five minutes because he was so worried and stressed out watching me have these seizures. But um, they were probably more around a minute to two minutes long. So they checked on my brain to make sure that I did not have a stroke, which thankfully I didn't. My brain is okay. The only side effects that I had from the seizures are memory loss, as well as I had an extremely badly bitten tongue. Every seizure that I had during the seizure, I would accidentally bite my tongue all the way around. So when I woke up, my mouth was filled with my tongue. My tongue was extremely swollen. It was purple. It was cut all the way around. So this, I had the sweetest nurses in the hospital and they just gave me cups, cup after cup of ice to try and help my tongue de-swell so I could speak. So my first memory, I don't remember, like I said, the ambulance, I don't remember the emergency room, I don't remember CT, I don't remember getting wheeled into labor and delivery, I don't remember them checking the baby on the ultrasound. So my first memory was my husband um, telling me that our son had passed away, that he was no longer alive and they couldn't locate a heartbeat. And then a doctor came in the room and it was this big, tall man, older man. I'd never seen him before. Like I mentioned before, we just moved to Hawaii. So I've only had two doctor appointments here and I haven't even been seeing an OB. I was seeing a nurse practitioner. So this man that I was seeing, which I later found out he's a high risk OBGYN that was called in to be on my case. Him asking me if I would like to have a C-section or if I would like to give birth to my son vaginally and be induced. Um, the only cure for what I was going through, the eclampsia, was to give birth. So I chose to be induced and give birth to my son vaginally. That's always been my birth plan. I mean, I never expected it to be like this, but I still wanted to have the experience and give birth to him the way that I wanted to. So this was the morning of Thanksgiving, November 28th, and I labored all day. Horrible contractions. Um, that day was very fuzzy because of the IV medication that they had me on to make sure that my seizures didn't start back. After pushing for, I don't remember how long, I want to say it wasn't very long at all. I feel like I did like 
10 or so pushes. He was born at 6.25 p.m. He was a perfect one pound, one ounce, 10 and a half inches long little boy. My husband and I named him Jensen Steven. Jensen just being a name that we love and Steven being his father's name. We then got to spend many hours cuddling him and kissing on him and loving him. We were very grateful that the nonprofit organization Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep was a part of the hospital that he was born at and a wonderful lady that I wish I could remember her name. She was so sweet. She took time out of her Thanksgiving dinner to come and take pictures of Nick Jensen and I and absolutely the sweetest lady. She made us feel so at peace during a horrible day. Watch him get his little feet prints taken and his little hand prints taken, got measured. They dressed him up in the cutest little outfit, a um, little bow tie and swaddled him up for us and then we took photos. And then my recovery began after he was taken out of the room. Um, I then stayed in the hospital, hospital an additional five days. So like I mentioned before, the only cure for eclampsia is to give birth. But my body wasn't reacting right. It wasn't reacting as if I gave birth and oh, everything's fine. My blood pressure's regulated. Everything's back to normal like it should be. My blood pressure continued to skyrocket to numbers like 180 over 110 and 165 over 109. It was very high blood pressures up in the ranges of the blood pressures I was having when I was having the seizures. So I had to stay on the magnesium. That kept my blood pressure low. Every time they would try and take me off the medication, my blood pressure would just skyrocket right back up to dangerous levels. After they finally got my blood pressure in like the moderate range, they took me off the IV medication. They then switched me over to a tablet blood pressure medication called Adalat, which I'm still taking a couple weeks later. Every time they've tried to take me off of the blood pressure medication, skyrockets to the 160s over 100 for the diastolic number. It's very scary. They're hoping that in hopefully a week or two, they'll be able to start weaning me off the medication because I'm on the lowest possible dose and the side effects of this medication are absolute crap. I feel like an old lady having to take medication to keep myself out of the hospital. I mean, that's what I'm doing, but this medication gives me constant headaches. I have one right now. And it has my heart rate constantly feeling like I'm working out. So like when I'm walking, my heart rate is like in the 140s. And when I'm sitting down resting, and sleeping it's around like 95 to 105 which I only know that because of my watch that tells me my heart rate and it's oh it's like hey are you working out right now I'm like nope I'm brushing my teeth medication and my recovery so far as well as you know just your average after birth recovery lots of cramping lots of bleeding things like that my milk came in um, that was a very sad reminder the day that that came in a couple days after the birth. Um, I was in the shower and obviously the hot water can make your milk production come in and um, it was just really sad. Stood there for a very long time and cried in the hospital shower because it really upset me that I had the milk but I had I didn't have my child to give it to. I am home now on Wednesday and today is Monday. I have to go to the funeral home to set up arrangements to get my son cremated. My husband and I decided that cremation would be the best option for us. We are military, we do move around. We know we're not gonna stay in this state forever so we want to make sure 
that he can go wherever we go. We don't want to leave him behind. That is all I have to talk about today. Um, like I said, I don't even know if this video is going to hit YouTube. If you're watching it, obviously it did. But I'm honestly using this as a way to talk about it from start to finish and get some closure on what happened because it's all very fresh. It was only a couple of weeks ago, but I feel like I need to talk about it so that I can begin to heal and to be able to look at my son's things without breaking down into a puddle and crying constantly every time I think about him. Maybe in another video, I'll go through what the hospital gave us for memory's sake with him. They gave us a whole box of things to take home to remember him by. I know all hospitals are different, but I know most of them have the same type of programs that our hospital did. So if you're interested in that kind of video, let me know. I might do that. If you're going through something similar, I really just want to let you know that you're not alone. The videos that I've watched on YouTube about stillbirth stories and neonatal death and things like that have honestly helped me and that's one of the reasons that I'm making this video right now because of the impact that those other videos of those moms have shared about their story and it made me feel so much better to know that I'm not the only one struggling to start my family and I'm young and I have lots of time and I know that whenever God is ready to bless our little family that we will be blessed with one and everything will go okay because we have God and we also have doctors now that know that I am prone to preeclampsia, so I will have a high risk OBGYN. I'll have more appointments. So we will have more monitoring of me and baby, and everything will go okay. Use the comments as a safe place to talk amongst yourselves, and I'll also be down there reading comments as well. Uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you for stopping by my channel, and I look forward to making more videos. Hopefully um, they won't be as sad and depressing as this one. When my husband and I are able to start trying, again when we're emotionally and I am physically ready to start trying for a third pregnancy, then I plan to make videos on that. Not 100% sure yet. If you're interested in TTC videos, or pregnancy in the future, whether that be six months, a year, two years from now, please leave that down in the comments below and I will know if you'd be interested in seeing something like that. Well, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of the support that I've gotten from friends and family who are watching and anybody who might be kind in the comments below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.